Hi guys and welcome to this video on substituting and evaluating the next video in the series on algebra at a year 7 level, but useful probably for year 8 as well because it's repetitive algebra and it is incredibly important. Now remember, algebra is nothing more than a big fat trick. Let's get that on the table. When we see through all these ridiculous tricks that we use in mathematics, then actually you will be a gun with a little bit of practice. Don't forget, practice makes perfect. Apparently, so my parents say. Now, if you haven't already done so, welcome and thank you very much. There is a little doohickey in the corner that will allow you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is really, really important. Alternatively, head over to mathsguru.com if you're not already there, M A W F sguru.com where you can search for videos and you can do all sorts of interesting stuff. There are notes to download and everything. Yes, the notes I'm about to write all over and the stuff behind me is downloadable on mathsguru.com. All right, let's kick in. Now, as I always do, I like to start with a little bit of an introduction and let us know what it is we're going to learn. We're going to need to know by the end of this lesson what it means to substitute, to evaluate. Now, in my previous video, actually, we already did the stuff on evaluate. Evaluate. It's finding the value of something. Know that a pronumeral really just stands in place for a number. What it is, a pronumeral actually is, and how to use bid maths. And I say there all the time that maths is a big fat trick. So zooming in a little bit more to give me some room. During the last lesson, we spent time looking at the language of algebra. And as I say, if you haven't already watched the video, head over to mathsguru.com. You can load it up. It's just there as the title of the uh, introduction to algebra. And you can watch that to give you the context of what we're about to do. All right. But we looked at the differences between expressions and equations. And all of those important words like terms, coefficients, variables, pronumerals, and constants, which we're going to use for the rest of this particular course. Now, I don't know about you. Are you a footy or soccer lover? Now, if you're in the UK watching this, you're probably going to turn around to me and say, well, what's the difference? Ah, well, I'm in Australia. Yes. And over here, footy is Australian Rules Football, AFL, which is actually quite interesting to watch. Sorry, guys, if you are a ardent soccer supporter, uh, yeah, don't really get it myself. A lot of overgrown men with fabulous hairstyles running around um, just for glory. Whereas footy, uh, AFL, I think is far, far more interesting and a nicer environment when you go and watch the games. Anyway, which do you prefer? Footy or soccer? I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. So sorry, don't care. Um, the point of it is, each of those sports have something that is important in mathematics. In fact, they stole it from mathematics. That's what I'm suggesting. Why? Because they use the word substitute. And we've been using that for many, many, many years. What does substitute mean in maths? Well, what does it mean in footy? What does it mean in soccer? It means you take a player off and put somebody of equal value, you hope, in their place. And that's what substitution is. Now, why would you substitute in soccer? Well, as I say, they're injury, they're a bit tired, their hair's fallen out of place, lol. Anyway, substituting is so, so important. Take something out of an equation or off the field and put something of equal value in its place. Okay, so letters are just in the dinner queue for numbers. Yes, when you are in that queue, and then basically, hopefully, you're going to get served first, and then the next person in the queue, and the next person in the queue. And in mathematics, order is really, really important. All right, so a list of terms, as I say here, is nothing more than a load of things in a queue. Right, a pronumeral is a variable. Let's, let's have a look at this here. So we've got something like 3x. Let's imagine x, oh, let's choose a different one, because x's are like xylophones. Let's say 3a. What do you reckon the, the letter a could stand for? Let's start thinking about stuff that an a could stand for. Let's say apple. So hopefully we are now reading this as three apples. Well, the question I have here is, well, how much is an apple? Well, pretty much depends on where you go, doesn't it? If you go to Coles, you might pay a dollar an apple. If you go to Woolwich, you might pay $2 an apple. If you go to somewhere really expensive, Harrods in the United Kingdom, you might pay $5 per apple. And so what I'm trying to say here is that the value of A could change. It could be $1, for example. It could be $2. It could be $5 for an apple. This will change how much I pay in total. So that A just stands for the cost of an apple, for example. And if we remember that with maths for all of the letters we're going to use, that they're effectively probably standing for a number, then you're going to ace this algebra stuff again. Now, the point of uh, uh, algebra is if I decide in one question the value of A is going to be 5, for example, then for that whole question or that whole part of a question, the value of A will stay as 5.